What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Brown, the Couch Potato. And I'm Dominique LaRue. And well, welcome back to another episode of Good Dope Sells Itself. Hey! <laughs> you gonna do a new ad lib every time? Every time. <laughs> oh, man. So, how you been? Um, I've been good. Um, it, it Like, my week has been fine. Like, my week has been fine itself. Nothing dramatic has happened. It's just, like, things that I can't complain about. But I can I say, you. That's, oh, I appreciate mm-hmm. you. You're such a good friend. <laughs> what I do, like, what has made my week to get just a little bit above the edge is just being glad that I moved. I am so glad that I moved. I never want to, like, I will never live on that side of town. Well, not that, I won't. I, I can't do I, it. I, li- I don't know how you did it that long. Like, you hear me? Okay. You might want to put it just a little closer to you, maybe. Yeah, hold on. Oh, moving more to the left. Okay. You can hear me now? All right, you can turn the highs up, too. Yeah, I guess it's like kind of get comfortable and then just adjust it to where you're going to be sitting. Yeah, I'm going to be right here. Be um, so, yeah, that sounds fine. All right. Well, I moved from over there, and... I did. I did my whole lease. You know, I, I toughed it out, yeah. but it was some bullshit. And it that the crazy thing is, like, something was always happening all the time over there, whether it was happening like to me or just in that area. Right. And right. You, it's the hood. Or it, the wood. It's just like the Bermuda Triangle of the ghetto. Oh. That street, like, it's just a black hole of hood right there. Cause like anything a black that can hole happen, of hood shit. Anything that can happen has happened over there. And that shit is so crazy to me. And you only stayed there, what, a year? One year. One year. And somebody asked me, because uh, my neighbors would call the police all the time, literally all the time, any chance they could get. If y'all hear some rumbling, it's raining. We live in South Louisiana, and it rains every day. Every, so, it's so, raining so every like, single day for raining. like three months. So um, aggravating. Do we, how, how does it sound with the rain? Like, we We good? Rain. Oh, we okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, see, that's the beauty of the mics. That's why I want to r- record an episode outside because uh-huh. it's like we we should be good. We should be good. But um, it's fifty two weeks in a year. You know what I'm saying? I want to say my neighbors have called the police on me a good thirty to forty five times. On you? Yeah. <laughs> like I know. I, I feel like I'm looking at the internet. Like I'm looking like I even know the shit. Yeah, like they called the police on me all the time, and nothing. Ever, like only one thing happened, but it was like it, nothing happened dramatically. Like I ain't never end up going to jail or no shit like that. But the police had the times a call. They'd be like, "Be considerate," or just so they don't come up there. They call you. No, they'll come to the door. Oh, they'll come to the door. But it's like maybe like three times they ever just came in. Because it's like, a lot of the times when they call the police on me, I'm literally doing nothing at the time. Right. So I'll just be like, man, come, man just come on in, bro. Like, <laughs> let me holler at you real quick. Right. Like, or, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. And that just, would get on. I couldn't do it. I'm so glad. Like, I've been where I'm at for like, um, for about two years almost. I'm almost done with my second lease. And we don't have no problems. Like, everybody around me smoke. Like, they got an old man with buku plants that be feeding the cats that stay above me. And he don't, he don't do no tripping. Like, I don't have no problems over there, and I ain't far from where you was, and but like that area, like it was ghetto. It was, it was just horrible. It was just horrible. They had a high speed chase. They had a high speed chase that ended up by me where I was staying, but then they like yesterday or the day before they had a high speed chase. Fifteen police cars again ended like in the uh, apartments up the street. It was like. I, I just I just don't understand. <laughs> like I'm hood, but like I'm hood, but it's certain places like yeah. that I just can't. That's just too hood for me. Like. I can't stay in the fucking ghetto. Get like I'm. I, it's I'm too much. I'm trying to rise above that. And what's <laughs> in my crazy? Life, I grew up around all that. Like I'm. I grew yeah. up in seven oh eight oh five, baby. Like if you know, you know. And, and I grew up <laughs> on Gassy and Rosenwald. And what's crazy is I live right next to a police station. But that police station don't do shit for right there <laughs> unless it's like super dramatic, like one oh, of them yeah. outside. And then they see or hear some shit, and they're like, okay, I got to do something. But if you call them, they're not doing shit. 
uh, you had to go the station around the corner. So niggas was always doing something, but it was a lot less than what it was on Ardenwood. When I first moved over there, I was like, hey, it's it's just like living in Scotland. Hell nah, it's, Hell nah. it's way worse than living in Scotland. Yeah. I shit you not. Get over there, shit friend. you not. And but you made it out. We made it out the trenches, <laughs> and we also big man. Hey, never thing. going back. Oh my God, I'm never going back over there. And uh, one of my homies, he was like, he uh, it's like he stuck over there. No matter what he do, we always end up back on Arnwood. And I was like, man, you might need to get some some work done. Like, get you make sure that juju broke in. Exercise. Hell yeah. Like some some if if that is true, if you see a pattern here, you may need right. to go holler at one of these spiritual ladies. Somebody's going to text you grand <coughs> rising in the morning <coughs> and get you right. Cuz yeah, that's that's I I would hate that. Yeah, I think a lot of people been going through through changes this week, I finally resigned from the job that I fucking hated. So can Hand everybody claps. please give me a round of applause in this bitch? <laughs> because, you know, three long years, a lot has happened to me in them three years. A lot has changed. I was able to accomplish a lot over at that job. But it's time for me to move on. I, it was time for me to move on. I'm so, so happy. I'm trying to get back. You know, I'm about to start back bartending. I'm about to just go full force, like, with my businesses. Yeah. And just, you know, try to make shit shake. Pick up maybe a couple, like, maybe a little part-time job just to kind of have something to do every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to just go from there. Like, I had said... Like, before I had decided to, like, actually resign, I had said that I was giving myself until 2022 to yeah. be completely self-employed. And, like, it just seemed like the way everything been going, the way everything, you know, it was just time for me to let that shit go. And yeah. I, I'm just not in the business of doing shit I don't want to do no more. I don't want to do nothing I don't want to do. Yeah. Like, life been hard. Like, I've been through a lot of shit, and I just want to wake up every day and do shit that I'm excited about. Amen. Yeah, Amen. like real talk. That's the so goal I'm right excited there. about that. I'm excited about what's next. I'm scared as hell, but shit, I ain't never been counted out before. So I feel that shit. I am. Which, I mean, hey, leads us to what? The affirmation, affirmation of the, of the day. Yeah, that's some good <laughs> positivity. So I'm going to keep the positivity rolling. Okay. <laughs> so the affirmation of today, uh, say it with me. I am in charge of how I feel. And today, I'm choosing happiness. I, I like to see, I like, that really fits with what that you were really saying. That really fits, that's why I picked it. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it really just goes, you know. Right, you got to choose happiness. I am in charge happiness. of how I feel, and today I'm choosing happiness, because it's so easy to just get caught up in the fucked up shit that right. the world fucked up. Like, it ain't no way Definitely. around it, you know what I'm saying? But you really just got to choose to get up every day and have a good day, like, in spite of. Right. In spite of, mm-hmm. for real. And, and yeah, it's tough, but you got, you got to. Yeah. You got to. Hell yeah. And don't let nobody else snatch that shit from you because niggas will be mad and not having a good day and just try to make your day bad. bad. Like, they will Projecting. do that. They will do it. And people will try to pretend like, they like, try to gaslight you about that. Be like, nah, why would somebody be trying to go out their way to ruin your day? And it's like, some people don't realize that's what they're doing. Yeah. But it's like, they mad. They yeah. mad about some shit, and then now they projecting it on you. That's why you got to learn you can't take... Shit personal, bro. Like, you really can't, like, especially if you know you ain't did nothing or you know, like, you, you know what else? You also, mad. people I have to, with you. people have to not project things that they can't do on the other people as well, right? Like, everybody, like, everybody is different in that type of in, in that way. Like, so it's like, just because I can't do something, don't mean I have to be like, nah, you can't do that. Like, that's impossible. Right. That's super hard. It's just like, it may be easier for other people. And so sometimes you have to take yourself out of that. Right. And uh, not put yourself in the other people's shoes in that type of situation. You at least have to tell them to try it. Yeah. So it's like, I don't, I don't believe in that. Like, or, uh, and telling people like, don't do something because I couldn't do it. Right. Yeah, for sure. Like, for Simone sure. Biles is the only person that can do the flip that she can do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so it's like she, she had to get there. So if somebody kept telling her, nah, don't do that, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And she never would have got there. Then she wouldn't be the only person doing the flip. So exactly. it's like, you know, and it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be another black person that's going to do it. I don't see somebody white ever pulling it off before Me her. Either. But it's just like, I just see another black, a young black girl just being inspired by and learning work, it. yeah, and learning it. It's just like, 
I feel like that's just how it's gonna kind of keep going because black women um, are kind of pushing, mm -hmm. like they're pushing, setting the standard in all aspects of life is what he's trying to say. Yeah, yeah, but especially in these damn sports, like because they had the uh, the figure skater that was doing the backflip, oh, and she yeah, was the I only one that it. could do that backflip, so they banned it because nobody else just could do, do it, it, or they would, it, they would get hurt trying to attempt to do it, but it's just like, don't don't stop my flow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you just know because they'll I could do, do it. You know how they do it. Yeah. Like, so shout out to black women, man. I need to find that black... Black women. I need to find that meme, because right. I, I love that Black meme. women. I love it. That's it. That's mm -hmm. the tweet. <laughs> 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 love it. That's that's it. Um, But... Our first topic. Uh-huh. Ooh. You can start it off. So. Because <laughs> nobody agree with me, and now I'm okay with that. I know. I, I also. <laughs> um, so the baby um, pulled up on two kids that were selling candy in the street. Um, he asked them, how much did you want for it? Like, how much How much you want? For the whole box. For the whole box. Kid told him, 200 he doubled back and then, you know, asked how much you how much you make on the box. Then he started trying to break it down and make them do math. And the kids didn't really know anything. And, you know, they 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 start trying to do the math and they were struggling. Uh, might I add, as an asterisk, that he also had no less than three bands in his hand. No less. Yeah, it was a lot of money. Cause I, I and I feel like I'm shorting him, I feel. I feel like I'm shorting him on that. Yeah. But he had no less than three bands in his hand in front of the kids. Um, so when they couldn't answer the math problem, he said, y'all trying to finesse me. And so he pulled out $2, you know, he gave both of them $2, uh, for their candy and then pulled off. So. The popular opinion. The popular opinion so far has been, you know, people agreeing like, oh yeah, the, them kids trying to finesse him. And they learned the lesson. You try to finesse somebody, you know what I'm saying? You're going to end up with nothing. And I've, um, I honestly, I just feel like y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. <laughs> y'all should be ashamed. Like, it's it's been kind of ridiculous to me. That's all I, I that's that's where I, I'll start. I, it's, it's been very ridiculous to me that people are looking down on some children, for one. Because one, let me start by saying this. Kids don't sell candy in the summer in the heat for fun. Like, they don't just do that for fun. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I, I need people to kind of, like, think about that. And school is starting back. You know what I'm saying? School is getting ready to start back. This is now the time that you start preparing. You start buying things for school. So instead of anybody thinking about any of the factors, you know, of why these kids may be selling candy, you know, all they've cared about is that, you know, they might have gotten a millionaire out of two hundred dollars. That's literally all anybody is caring about. Like, oh, they tried to finesse a millionaire. Like, that's what? Like, they tried to get two hundred dollars from a millionaire that had, like I said, no less than three bands in his hand, in front of these kids, and. Look, it's, it's crazier because people are like, y'all, their parents should be teaching them integrity and shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to you. <laughs> they, they're like, yeah, uh, they ain't never going to be good businessmen. Uh, and they need to learn integrity and they parents need to teach them better and shit like this. Or they need to learn math. Like, y'all really like calling some kids dumb as well. Like, y'all spending way more time downing some children than y'all thinking about the fact that a millionaire... One, if you took... My, my son is 10 years old. If you ask him how much... if he And he got a bunch of, a bunch of candy, he's just trying to get off on something. He, he's selling something. And you ask him how much he want... He's going to tell you a lot of money, first of all. He's going to. He's, he's going he's gonna to say the highest amount that he could possibly get out of you. He's going to say whatever. It could be $40. He's going to say 100 He's going to try to get more. You feel me? This guy has all this money in his hand in front of these kids. 
You feel me? And you're 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 expecting a bunch of children to make a a solid judge. Like you're making, like, you're asking them to make really a solid think decision. You're about to have a stack of money in front of somebody, and they tell you they only want forty dollars. I don't give a fuck if I'm selling toenails, bitch. What adult do you know would do that? If you got a stack of money out in front of me and you ask me how much I want, I want all of it. I want every red cent you have. And I don't give a fuck about none of that self-righteous bullshit because I promise you, you don't ask me how much I want. There's also y'all don't listen. He asked them how much they want, not how much the box is worth. So, yeah, $200 so that I can go sit my ass down, buy me something that's, you know, as nice as kid a 10-year-old can fucking buy for themselves and, and re-up on some more candy and tell everybody I met the baby. Yeah. And he gave me $200. Yeah. Like... I don't know why people was expecting these churn to like. Oh, he got finesse. First of all, if you can get finesse to buy a child, then that's on your that's on your booty. You deserve. If a child can finesse you, I mean, it was obvious what was going on. You know what I'm saying? And I I don't feel like I really don't feel like the baby did anything wrong. I just feel like the baby has a really bad case of main character syndrome. Um, I think that the whole situation and whole setup was to make him look a certain way. Yeah. I think that if the situation would have went a little different and the kids would have like lowballed themselves, he'd have tried to. It'd have been some old "I'm gonna teach you a lesson" ass shit. Then yeah, you know you'd be like, saying? "Oh like, y'all lowballing y'all selves. I would have gave y'all two hundred yeah, a piece if like, y'all would have said something." Like you know, I just really don't feel like it was just you know. I really don't feel like it was as. You know, and Genuine. I also, and to, and to frankly speak, I don't give a fuck about a millionaire being finessed out of $200. I don't give a rat's ass. Like, I swear, I do not give a damn. And, like, just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean that you obligated to, like, you know, give it away and stuff like that. But I just feel like you came around here, big flexor. You came around here walking lick. I got something for sale and you want it, you finna pay the high. Like, stop acting like y'all don't know how that shit go. Like, y'all want to give everybody a lesson in business, but like, bitch, you be stealing our Walmart checkout. <laughs> you finesse, you're finessing a multi-million dollar corporation out of the shit you want every day. All right. So, yeah, you a walking lick. It's hot as fuck out here. <laughs> and we ain't got no money. All right. These so niggas selling candy, bro. So it's I not like they selling doing. iPhones or something. Like they selling something big. You be like, man, these niggas just, you know, they just stealing this shit from people and just selling it in the street. Nah, these niggas selling candy. It's <laughs> just the fact that I don't. I again, I don't feel like the baby did nothing wrong because I mean, at the end of the day, you can't make him spend his money. That's you know that is the bottom line. Whether he wanted to get him two dollars or two hundred dollars, that's his money, and we can't tell him what to do with it. I just feel like the whole situation and the whole recording and posting and the, I just, I just like think the whole thing was just some very kids. yeah, it was just very performative, and it really just opened you know it just really showed how the the lack of the sense of community that we have because if you like you clearly in a position to help them, yeah. you clearly are in a position to change their situation at least just for. That for the time being, right? You know what I'm saying. But instead, you want to teach somebody a lesson. Like, and come on, he didn't, bro. He didn't People even have help. to give them two hundred dollars. He could have just gave them enough to uh, for the box. box. Like that's it. Like, like you know what I'm saying. He could have just been like, look, that ain't how they go. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But here's another go get you another box and now y'all know. You know what I'm saying? Go get yeah. you another box. Y'all can go sit down That's for simple, the day. Man. And you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever, like that. It just was very performative to me. And I just couldn't believe how people just have more empathy for a millionaire than they do poor children. Right. Like I just I'm just like, y'all really think I care about that? Like, no, he not obligated to give his money away. Nobody's saying that people should do bad business with him. But like for y'all to really sit up here and act like two hundred dollars is a loss. Please. He could have gave that to he could have just gave it to them kids. Like we're talking. Right. But I mean, you know, everybody don't do shit the way I do. Everybody don't see shit the way I see it. You know I feel that. I just it, the, it, the what part burned me more was just like teaching them a lesson. Like I don't feel like you're teaching kids a lesson that way. Like you're scorning them more than you're inspiring them. Right. Like when when you put kids into a situation like that and it's like they if they needed money, like they're just gonna go and do something else to go get money. Like, 
you not yeah. you not like they be like, oh yeah, you shouldn't have lied or tried to finesse me. So it's just like, okay, well we just go do something. We ain't got to finesse people now. So it's like that's 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 and it's like think about kids. Like, would you if somebody did that to you? Do you really feel like you would have took that well? Like, do you really not feel like? With that much fucking money. Is, do you really feel like? Oh then yeah, I'm gonna be a better businessman the now. Then you the got baby them gave all me two dollars over the internet. Like, like you embarrassed them kids. Like you got all types of adults calling these kids dummies. Of, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I like my son is smart as hell, and I feel like if you ask him a math problem like that, if you just ask him a math problem, he's still gonna have to think about it and shit like that. Right. He ain't like they're children. You you should be showing a lot more empathy to children. Like that's just that's just that's so weird to me. Right. I agree. I agree. So I'm glad we can close that because I got fucking tied up True. talking to y'all raggedy asses on the True, internet man. about that shit. It's over. I ain't like the way he did that shit point blank period. So that's how I feel about it. So earlier we watched the double XL twenty twenty one. Yeah. Freshman class. Um, this freshman class stuff, um, it just doesn't do it for me anymore. It's like, not how it used to be, like, of course, but we getting, I guess we getting old head age. We and like and, and it's like, I try not to look at it like an old head like type shit, but it's like, it, it, it never, it, it, when I'm looking at it, it doesn't even seem like, you know how at least it looked like some of the artists that they were at least picking were, you know, they had a mixture, mm -hmm. you know, it was like a good variety, you know. You have your your artists that aren't lyrical, you know what I'm saying. You have your artists that are lyrical, you know. Like it, it was just a good blend. Like they had the the class that had Big Sean, what wasn't it? Big Sean, Meek Mill, Wale, oh yeah, Wiz. That like was they a good, and yeah, they, but it's like even like even the one that had like Kevin Gates and Chance. Mm -hmm. Those were all really good blends, and then they they made good ciphers. Mm -hmm. Well. I'm, let me not say I'm not well. I'm not still not going down. I'm gonna say they they were still good. Like I still enjoyed them. It still felt like you were bringing together good artists. You know what I'm saying from across. Like they were popular and they had a level. You know what I'm saying. Right. Like they they had the artistic level. Now it's like I, I I can't. You can't really tell what are the qualifications that they're choosing from because it's like a lot of them. I've heard, I I don't try to act like I keep up with all music, but it's like I may have heard of some of them. And then, but it's like you would think that they're picking artists that have that are popular, mm. and it just doesn't really. Or it's like if they're not picking one that's popular, it's a really good artist, right. so he can affect the you know a change in the industry in the future. And it just don't really be feeling like that. So if uh, like how many double XL freshmen can you think of that are still relevant? That is like like, and it's just relevant from when they're on it. It's, it's that's hard. That's Fact. it's it's hard after a while. I listened to uh, to the ciphers. Um, I I took notes on everybody. <laughs> um, I didn't take notes. I should have. I took notes on everybody. Um, because I had just sat down and watched it. Um, last night. So it started with Ruby Rose. It was separated like it was Ruby Rose, Pooh Shiesty, Flo Millie, and Forty Two Doug on the first one, and then it was DDG, Lakia, Moray, and Coilerae on the second one, mm -hmm. and then the last two was Blast and Tusi. So Ruby Rose, I, I'm gonna keep it real. Like Ruby Rose is beautiful. Yeah, she is. But pretty. she, you know, she's really, in my opinion, at this time, lacking in delivery. <laughs> Do I feel like potential is there? Absolutely. Am I rooting for her? Absolutely. I root for all the rap girls. But Ruby Rose just, she just don't keep my attention. She needs and a like hype when coach. she was rapping, yeah, like I need her to give me more. Cause like the bars is there. Like it's it's not yeah. like she can't rap, but like. She just rapped like this the whole time. Yeah, it's just and very that's all dry. Be giving and that's dry. <laughs> like, like you could, you could, you could, you could be dry, but you gotta be energetic like Mace. Yeah, like I need you to like give. I need her to give more. And then Pooch, I said I, I didn't really like his rap, but yeah. I love Pooch Shiesty. Like <laughs> I can't get burnt, like burnt, like I can't get enough of Pooch Shiesty. But I mean, I'm happy he's there. I feel like he deserved to be there. He gave mm -hmm. us vibes for show this yeah, year. Yeah, like he, he um, definitely one that deserves. To be yeah, there. so he deserved to be there. I wasn't really fucking with his rap, but I didn't feel like he fit well with this beat. This was also my least favorite beat of the cycle. Yeah. 
So, um, you know, but I love who shy still. And then, of course, my girl, Flo Millie. I live for Flo Millie. Flo Millie Flo ate Millie. everybody up, point blank, period. She came in hard. She came in with the look. She came in with the delivery. She came in with the bar. She gave a whole different flow than everybody else I was. love her little country ass. Oh, I just can't get enough of Flo Millie, honey. Y'all know I love, this is a Flo Millie stand <laughs> account. <laughs> Period. Yeah, I really, I really fuck with her. Um, and I wanted, I like, I wanted to point out just how a lot of people is like she raps the same, and she, her, it would, it, it, it was different, you know. But what like, I'm saying? I don't see how she. Well, I guess I really listen to her. Yeah. Like, so I, it's like I listen to more than what like the singles. Right. I feel like her, uh, her individual freestyle was more like her normal flow. Oh yeah. And then this one was like okay. Nigga can switch this bitch yeah, up now. Like I love that's, that's it. That's why I, I fucked with it. But yeah, I I, I love slow slow. So Flo how Millie. you felt about forty two Doug? Um, forty two Doug. I just feel like he's just happy to be there. Yeah, like I'm just happy. <laughs> like, that's another one. Like I ain't really big on forty two Doug, so but like I'm happy for right. that nigga. Like I be rooting for everybody black. Yeah, I like, like I don't I'm not care a, if I don't listen to you or not. I'm I'm not a Doug you. fan, <laughs> but he got some shit that snap. Like that song uh, for the gang. Do fuck with that song Ooh. with Roddy Rich, and uh, I mean he had the song with Lil Baby. Those are the two that the only two that I could really think of right now. But I like he. He do his thing every once in a while, but it's like I had to kind of like wait to kind of see more before I could call myself a Doug fan. Yeah, I feel that. But so he, then, um, the next one was, and I really like the second beat. Um, and the next one was DDG, yeah. Lakia Moray, and Koi Laray. Um, DDG, I don't, I've never like really heard any of his music <laughs> unless I've just heard it around and I didn't know that that was DDG. Right, right. Um, not to look into it. Yeah, but he did a good job though. Like he yeah. wrote the beat, you know what I'm saying? Like he, his, his flow was good. Like I feel like he did a good job. Um, what you think? He, he, he was pretty average to me. Like I didn't, there was nothing like wrong with it, right. but it like it didn't stand out to me. Yeah, like we don't hate it. Yeah, you know, and so congratulations. He didn't say anything <laughs> that just made me go ooh. You right. know what I'm saying? Like. But I was like, um, I do want to look into his music a little bit more, though. Yeah. And Lakia, the girls ate everybody up. I'm telling yeah, y'all. Yeah, like, Lakia was spitting. Lakia. She was spitting. Um, I really need to watch hers again because, yeah. um, I, which is crazy. Like, I really wish her and Flo Millie were in the same one just so the, the heat would have been able to kind of keep going. Um. But she like though she was the one that did the best on that one, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Like hers stood out, her flow. Uh, I wish I I wish I watched it more than uh, a, like three times so I can remember some of the shit that she said. But mm-hmm. I feel like she I feel like she's gonna be around for a while. Yeah, yeah. She um she hot. She she signed a QC. Ah okay. Yeah, she yeah. signed a QC. Oh, yeah. So yeah, um, they, they gonna you know do I think they her. gonna do something with her because she can she she bring the bars like yeah. she can rap for real. Uh, Moray, I wasn't I had never heard of him. Moray, is so, that how you say it? Yeah, Moray. He got the song Quicksand. Oh, okay. Um, I like it. Mm-hmm. I need to listen to more of his songs because he he. He actually, and he was on a J. Cole song too. Okay. It's uh the J. Cole song with 21 Savage. Um, it's an is also a nice song. Like mm-hmm. he he, in my opinion, sound more like what Rod Wave should be. Yeah, I was about just about to say he definitely be giving Rod Wave. Cause it's like he's not he he does some singing, but and his like he does like a lot more, but he fits like more into like a choir. Mm-hmm. Like he's singing a lot more, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I feel like he know he knows how to ride some melodies and harmonies and stuff like that. So it's like sometimes I feel like you could fit, you know how like you'd be riding in the car, you listen to some R and B, but then you just start uh, hitting the harmonies with it. Mm-hmm. I feel like you could do that a lot with his, with music. his music. Yeah. So it's like I want to listen to more, but I do like him. Uh huh. So uh, yeah, I have to get into it. I definitely have to listen to some. Definitely more of it. like quick saying get off. Yeah. And and it's like. That like I said, that's what Rod Wave sound like because it's like it's not like sad. He's telling a story, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But it's not like, um, damn, it's just not like woe is me feeling. And yeah. that's what Rod gives me all the time. Yeah, like, like he's too sad for he's, me. It, like I just be like, God damn, he's like, too sad that's, for me. That's what his music feel like. <laughs> so yeah, like I just like just just let that bitch just let that bitch ride. That's that's actual come up music to me, right? Like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So next was Koi Lorray. She is one person. I swear to God, you are not. And she might be. She look like seem like she's cool as fuck as a person, but you you will never get me to like her music. I swear. I will never. Okay, this is my thing with Koi Ray. I just... I like Koi Ray for what she gives, mm-hmm. for who she gives it for. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I'm not a fan of her music, but I think that she's cute. I think that she's different. And you came like she came with the bops. I hate that song. But you know it. I ain't get that ooh. You know that bitch though, but and that's how like, but that's, that's how songs that I hate be because right. pe- other people I end up hearing it in some way because I heard it for the first time on the radio. I was like, "What's this?" I was like, "The be cool," but like but then, she got the numbers, so it's like whether you like it or not. That's true. She is she's doing but, well. But that's why <laughs> now I change it every time that song come on because I was hoping that that wasn't the whole song. But then when I found out that it is mostly the whole it song, is mostly oh, I was like, "Okay, I can't I can't fuck with it." Um, I I, I just think she's cute. I just can't I think do she's it. Different, and I'm I'm just I fu- like I said. I fuck with her as a person. Yeah, like I'm just. I'm it's just it's like Saweetie. Her. I fuck with her Everything as a person. Ain't for me, but I, I I wouldn't. I can't. I I can't fuck with that music. Like, I, it be it be so hard for me. Like, oh yeah, you you cool, my nigga. But I, I when they when they concert come, I'm like go do something else. Yeah, like. Come. I just can't. You know, I just feel like everything ain't for everybody, but you know, Corla Ray do what she do, what she do it for, who she do it for, and That's true. she has done well this year. She got the numbers, you know. She had TikTok going up, and her her image, you know, she just she different. She is she is literally something new. So even if true. I don't like it, you know, it's I can appreciate somebody, I some. You know, it's it's something new. So. She turned around, started twerking. Nigga say she just gave up and turned around, started twerking. Which she, she did. did. But, I mean. I mean, hey, fuck you. She I, just, I just let me say this. I hope she grows as an artist. And so she that young she as fuck. Can, There's time. Yeah. I, I hope. Think- I hope. Because we say that, but it's like when some people are low key controlled by their uh by their label, they can't <laughs> they can't necessarily grow. grow. Like their label wants you to make that mm-mm again. Over and over. So it's like, ah, ooh, ooh. That's like you're going to have go through all the fucking vows, basically. So it's like you got to keep doing shit like that, and you can't grow as an artist. So, I mean, I hope. You know what that just hope. reminded me of that song? There's a song, I can't think, it go, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Ah, it's a techno song, oh and I can't God. think right, of the name know? of it. Do you you know what I'm talking about? Oh my God! Like this, <laughs> I was hoping like, that the headphone coming out. Like, like they yeah. just kept like maybe I'm like, just high. Like, but I was hoping was like, that was. Ah, a... Oh my God! Ah. Like I can't even think of it. Well, that just popped up in my head when you said that shit. Oh, um, man. But the you, next one was yeah, you Blast and Tusi. And they had their own beat. They had the best beat. Yeah. I had bitch, never heard a blast wrote. before either. He reminded me of Hurricane Chris. But yeah. I had really enjoyed his um that, his part. Man, that nigga literally in the fucking video looked like the baby's clone, but baby. Like that's who that nigga look like. <laughs> but baby. That nigga literally look like the baby right now. Um I be I, that should be funny to me. Just be like niggas all do be looking alike. At one point, like when they in the industry and start dressing like and shit, like. But I thought he was he was cool. I did like the last. No, I like Blast over Tusi's, but Tusi was cool, but it it didn't stand out as much. But I liked Blast. Like Tusi had that Dior raincoat on. I was like, okay, it's giving. (laughs) Niggas, niggas trying to bring shit back in style instead. Yeah, I like when niggas dress. Even when it be tacky, I just like the niggas to put that shit on. You try that shit out, man. Put your shit on. (laughs) (laughs) Overall, I think. um, Overall, I can honestly say I don't. I don't feel like any. I ain't gonna say I don't feel like anybody was left out because I mean, if you ask me, it's a whole bunch of other people 
that I feel like could have been on there. But I think this the list, the, even if I don't listen to everybody, I ain't feeling everybody vibe. Yeah. I think they had a, I think they got a solid list this year. Just like you were saying at the beginning, like yeah. I think they got a solid list this year. They picked some people that they picked some real breakout stars. So that's true. Um, that's I true. think I think that's you know I think that's dope. I look forward to the list every year. You know what I'm saying? Just to kind of. Cause I'd be happy for you know. Yeah, I'm ha- I'd be I definitely happy for always be wanting to see where the people go. That's that's always my thing because it's like okay, these are the people that that stood out the most. That's why they made it here. So let's just see where they kind of go from there. How they kind of impact and change things. Like Post Malone, I can't remember which one he was on, mm-hmm. but I was just like, I think he was on. No, he wasn't on the one with Twenty One Savage. I was about to fuck that up. That that. <laughs> I don't remember which one he was on. Um, but I was like, that was one person. Lil Dicky was on one, right? Mm-hmm. He's still doing his thing. I don't know if it's necessarily musically, because music wasn't his end goal. Ah, 2016. But they're still, they still do pick yeah. future superstars. I, so it's have, like, I um, do, do definitely give them that much. They do pick some. Mm-hmm. So, um, the next thing I want to ask you about, so, because, mm. you know, you're a man, I'm a woman. True. And we're besties. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we not really had these conversations a lot, but, like, in, we talk about the people we date, obviously, yeah. because we best, best friends. friends. <laughs> so, I had ran across a clip on the internet from the Roommates podcast, mm-hmm. and they were talking to one of their guests. I forget her name. She's absolutely beautiful. Um, and the topic of the conversation was, are modern women too independent? Um, <laughs> I, it's a, it's a lot of these questions. I don't like to say yes or no, cause it is yes and no. Right. A lot of these, a lot of the, the answers to these things. Um, and that's why I also tell a lot of my homies, like you really got to kind of that's why it's important to like not be a hoe, like slut around, but really like date, because you really have to go through different women. Because you're gonna find they it's it's a yes on the yes side. They have a lot of women that are ultra independent. Right, it's like they won't ask you for a fucking thing. Right, at all. And I'm the type of guy I like to help. Mm-hmm. Like. I'll make sure you're good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need help with something. You need to move something. Like, I'll I'll ask you. But. Because my friend is a good man. But it's like, you'll meet the women that moved their whole house around. All this heavy ass, back breaking ass shit. And you be like, why the fuck you ain't ask me to help? Like, you I'll at least. Me? <laughs> I, I'll be like, why do you ain't just ask me to help you move this shit? Like, I would have did that. Like, no, that ain't like a problem. I can honestly say I'm definitely not independent in that aspect because you know I don't want to do nothing, nothing manual. Uh uh-uh. uh, no. That. No. And and it's like, <laughs> you know, it's cool to a certain extent, like only to a certain extent. Like, I don't like a woman that. When and when it's like when I say don't want to do anything, it's just like, like shit that you have kids for, like. Can you bring me the remote oh, all no, day? No, like no. you don't like to do anything. It's oh, like no. I'm just I'm waiting on you hand and foot. Like no. I don't like and it's like I have moments for that, but it's like I don't I don't like people like like that. But it's like Oh hell no, that's just lazy. I'm I wouldn't say that, but like as far as like if I need a damn table or something put together or like a couch moved or my oil cha- like yeah. I'm I'm not I don't want to change tires and move furniture and shit like that. <laughs> I don't want to. But like, you know, I'm not just no like nagging needy bitch like, um, oh, can't get this and not like that, but like, yeah, big stuff, heavy stuff. Right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I and, don't want to do that. I've I've kind of worked with it till I couldn't in a sense, but it was like it was other things that kind of caused those things not to work out with those type of independent women. But it is kind of a cycle. But I like look at it like, okay, don't try to force her to like sit down. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like work with her. Like I'll try to, oh, you need to paint the table, okay? Well, I'll come paint it with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then try to ease it out so it's like you can understand. Like I'll do things for you. You right. know what I'm saying? Like 
and I'm not, and it's like I'm not trying to do things for you. Like I acts of service, I do that. You know what I'm saying? Like I do that shit. So it's like it's not me trying to get over on you or anything like that. Like I'm just trying to help. Right. So, but like I feel like independent women have other issues. So it's like that, that kind of go with trust, in my opinion. Like they don't trust anybody. Else so they, shit. yeah. Exactly. So it's like. Okay, like I feel like you're not gonna ever trust me. So it's like I'm if I feel like you're not ever gonna trust me after a long period of time, I'm not gonna like it's not gonna work out. Like trust is a big factor for me. Right. But that's what I think it is it is for a lot of hyper independent women. Uh the trust factor doesn't really grow because they're so used to being independent, so they just don't trust anybody for anything, not even just to handle or do things. So that's kind of that issue with it for me. But so that's why I tell them is you just gotta, you know, date around and find a woman that kind of meets that balance for you. Cause yeah. Yeah, you like a hard time with that, man. And I also feel like, you know, things things have really changed, you know, as far as like how they used to be fifty years just fifty mm-hmm. years ago. Like you think about from just from like the nineteen, just like the fifties through the seventies. Definitely, like, women couldn't do shit. Women couldn't do shit. Like you know what I'm saying. Like my grandmother wasn't wasn't like she was in her probably like late twenties. Um, I don't remember the exact year women were able to vote. Like mm-hmm. it was it was barely a hundred years ago. Yeah, if that long, we wasn't even allowed to vote. We wasn't able to have a bank account without a man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So now that we in this big 2021. Yeah. You know, shit is completely different. We don't need men to succeed in life. Back in back in the day, it literally used to be where you kind of needed a man to have a stable and successful life because there was so much shit that we couldn't do yeah. without y'all. Yeah. Um and it's not like that right. anymore. So we're able to work like we couldn't work. Like it what was it a hundred years ago when we couldn't fucking work? Right. Like it, we yeah. couldn't even have jobs in industrial like you know what I'm saying? It wasn't shit was different. So it's like the modern day woman might be too independent. Yeah, if you're looking at it from a standpoint of where we came from, absolutely. Um, but I do also feel like there has been a, a disruption in the balance. You you know what? I don't wanna like cause it's like how do I put this? I'm not on no men downing shit, but I do feel like what also added to that is like a lot of niggas like asking, what the fuck you bring to the table? You know what I'm saying? So that creates also more hyper independent women because it's like. Yeah, because the pressure is on. Like, you know, I mean, it is what it is. The pressure is on. Like. Especially if you want to date a certain type of man. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times nowadays, it definitely comes with, like, people have just been burned all around. Yeah. You know, on both ends. Because you meet a man who have his shit together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not even saying, like, millionaire. I'm talking about, like, your average Joe who doing his thing. Yeah. You know, um, holding down steady income, got his own place, own car. You know, stable stable life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, even just at that point, like that, it's kind of there's an expectation um, to a to a certain degree, and it comes with an arrogance as well. And so it's like as a woman, th- the pressure is on because you're not about to make me feel, you know, what I'm saying less than, uh, yeah. Especially you know me being me, I got a lot, I got a lot of pride. So that's true. I have to like I am hyper independent simply because. You not. I don't want to give nobody the power to take nothing away from me. Yeah. I don't want to give nobody the power to say that they that I wouldn't have something. Yeah. If it wasn't because of them. Yeah. Now I do only entertain beneficial situations, but it don't. It but it's not transactional. Yeah. Like you gotta just kind of learn the game, and until you marry, you in the game. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know That's what I'm true. saying? Like we in the game. So. That's true. Like I'm hyper independent. One because you know I don't have it's it's just me. You know what I'm saying I don't yeah. have nobody paying all my bills. I wish I did. If you'd like to do so, please let me know. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you that. Uh-huh. But you know I'm I'm a I'm a grown ass woman, so I'm gonna make sure 
that I have everything I need and all of what I want, and you know, within you know, within my reason that I don't limit myself and stuff like that. So the pressure is definitely on, not only because I hold myself to a certain standard, but also I don't want to be that girl that you know, nigga, ask me what I got going on and it ain't yeah. shit. Yeah. No, I do this, this, this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know, I'm like I have I have built a life, so it's not what you bring to the table. Like my table is made. Not made. I ain't gonna say made like that. <laughs> like I'm just a made woman out here balling and rich, not like that. But I have created a stable life for myself, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm an asset in in everybody. You know, in everybody who I yeah. encounter. So, you know, it the pressure be on. Like what you bring to the table, and it's like this, a whole nother table. Like what you trying to make this bitch longer? Cause a lot of the times. Niggas be on shit like that and don't have no table, don't got a pot to piss or a window to throw. I feel you. So it's I like the pressure's you. on for us to be hyper independent because if not, we getting dogged out straight up. I feel you wanna know what's crazy about that. I feel that exactly, but I feel like a lot of women end up with guys like that so like randomly all the time. So they feel like they project that on uh, everybody else. Like that's something that I feel like is is a is a real thing because I feel like women, um, it's so many dudes like that out here. Niggas be bullshit. They I, and it's like you know. Niggas be bullshit. I'm for, keep it for real. me having having so many women friends. I've heard like enough stories to where I really can't be like I can't really defend a lot of the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like they they don't be lying. You know? Yeah, like niggas be bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And so it just the the men who I guess what they calling them these days high value men. They off they it's there it's very few like as far as like the mass definition of a high value man like you know what I'm saying so like it is niggas out here getting in doing their thing and stuff like that I, I'm not saying that but a lot of the time a lot of these men be looking for a woman to take care of them and you can tell because they go from bitch to bitch from bitch house to bitch house from baby mama to baby mama. And it's just, you know, and they have done absolutely nothing. They have nothing, and and it's like, you ain't got nothing but babies, no legacy to leave them. It just be a whole bunch of, you know, what can you do for me? I just want to say before anybody look at this and be like, this nigga ain't say nothing, I'm not one of them. Oh, I'm definitely not one of them. <laughs> just, just before anybody be like, well, this nigga was quiet the entire time you said something. Nah, definitely no, I'm just, not just one of them. letting her talk. But it's like, it's just the dating pool really is just not what's up right now, and when you when you really just like women we kind of don't have no choice but to focus on you know our own advancement because we honestly just go go back to like what you said you can't trust no nigga like i ain't trusting i'm not trusting my livelihood like i'm not doing that yeah like now nah, you definitely can come in and add to me the same ways i would like to add to you so it's like if your resources are financial <laughs> you know what i'm saying that definitely that always helps yeah so, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, wait, I'm high, and I almost <laughs> forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> Damn. She said, basically, talking about a beneficial relationship. Oh, yeah, the relationship would, would you know, be beneficial. You could add to me the same way I add to you, but I would never do no shit, like, completely stop working unless, you know, like, even if I was to stop working, I would never stop working on what I want to work on. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would never not be getting my own money. Yeah. Because it feels too good to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Nigga could give me, like, literally, when I say a nigga could give me everything and it'll never be enough, it'll never be, I'm not saying that as to, like, he could never amount, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Or, like, what he do could never amount, but I always want to be more. M- like, yeah, like, like I keep always up. want to, yeah, like, I can get, like, there's no, like, even if I live a life of luxury and I kick my feet up the majority of the day, I got money coming from somewhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. gotta have it, And that, you know? that's something that people, like, you know, dudes always be feeling like they're going to get in a relationship with a gold digger. One, I want to say that women do be gaslighting some situations because I know all dudes don't have money, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that, but... I feel like y'all gaslighted because y'all act like it don't happen where dudes don't end up in no situations with women ever. You know what I'm saying? That try to just use them for you know what I'm saying? Like that's First of all, that be y'all that be, be saying, the thing that I feel like is wrong with what both sides in general because that's what we both do to each other. But that's where I feel like the disconnect be at because I feel like y'all validating. You know what I'm saying? 
a lot of experiences, if that makes sense. Mm. So, but I do feel like guys do the same thing to women in a lot of experience. You know, just yeah, especially like, like it just be when y'all a whole talk about lot creeps. Of, it just be a whole lot of like working against each other. I don't yeah. feel like women are too independent. I just feel like not even just men, but society as a whole is definitely struggling with that transition of women becoming more, you know, being able to be more independent. And, well, I mean, we can get into the topic of, like, just the way how the system has worked against the black family. We'll have to, like, about that on we'll have to get into that on yeah. a whole nother episode. We'll, we'll, but yeah, we we'll have to bring just some people looking, in to talk about that, too. Yeah, and, like, just to just to kind of just wrap this, you know, topic up, I, you know, I just feel like, I don't feel like modern-day women are too independent. I feel like modern-day society is struggling with the progression of mm. women's independence on both ends. Okay. On both ends. And it just it just be a lot of... It just be a tug of war when we really should just... You know what I'm saying? Everybody should be on the same side. We should be all about the equality and the progression, like, you know what I'm saying, as a group and, and make that work for us. Yeah. Because if everybody is able, then everybody should... You know, be able to whatever, whatever. And how you work it out between you and your partner is how you work it out. Right, right. But, you know what I'm saying? It definitely needs, I would like to see more of a, like, you know, work with me being so so independent. Just like you were saying, like, if you know, if I want to do it myself, help, you know, help me do it. And then I could kind of be like, oh, let yeah. me got it. Like, instead of just, oh, she don't need me for now, I'm going to just let her do it all. Because niggas will watch you do it all. Yes, they will. And not offer shit. Yes, they will. So, but yeah. <laughs> That's all I understand about that. Okay, we're going to go into our next topic uh, right after this break. Okay. All right, so next we on our good dope list. Um, talking about basically like, you know, movies and shit. So we watched Space Jam. Yeah. Um, first, I want to say about Space Jam. Um, somebody brought up the fact that the first Space Jam is, is technically trash. And uh, it was yeah, only right. really as good as it was because Michael Jordan couldn't do no wrong in that time. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of true because the acting was horrible. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. acting was horrible, but it's the nostalgia, you know? Yeah, like, like it's, it's a, a cult. It's a cult. It's a staple in the culture. And I want to say for like a lot of adults, this is basically what it's gonna be for kids in this generation. Like LeBron James, one of the biggest basketball players yeah. ever. And it's like he's making a, a space jam, so it's like that's why it's a new legacy, right? Like it's for these kids, so don't take that away from these kids. Yeah, you know what I'm like saying? all the hypercritical shit is like you know that's cool because I mean I I watched it and right. it's really keep my attention, but like honestly, it's not for me. I just think that yeah. I like LeBron James, so I was just glad to see he got a space jam. Right, like that's tight. It's, <laughs> okay, it's okay if we say it's a bad movie. It's okay to like bad movies. Right. But I also do tell everybody that it's okay to like bad movies. Yeah. I like some bad movies. Yeah, and I I do too. Mm-hmm. I, I do too. Before because people always get on me about saying something is bad, but it's like I do like bad movies. Right. Um. So just let the kids have this. Yeah. And just or just have fun with it because it's it's a it's a lot of shit to have fun with. Like it was a lot of random kind of things. Like it's it's owned by Warner Brothers. Yeah. So. They had a lot of Warner Brothers ass shit in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, like they talked about Game of Thrones. I, I also want to say LeBron James is a Hufflepuff for all my Harry Potter fans. Not a Hufflepuff. Uh, a lot of people try to shit on Hufflepuff, but I too am a Hufflepuff. Uh, the Hufflepuff is the only ones that like to eat and chill. They're not the ones that go seek out danger and shit. <laughs> like. They're in there, they cabana, you know what I'm saying, and they dungeon smoking weed and eating and frolicking and shit. They the cool ones. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else want to, like, all that extra shit. Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff gang. So, uh, the movie, like, Alyssa, you, you said that it wasn't for you. It didn't really keep your attention. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, Don Cheadle was the villain. And... I he did a good job, but I just didn't like his casting. Mm-hmm. I feel like they could have got somebody else. Yeah, that's what um, I was like. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like his casting. That's the only thing. I feel like they could have got somebody a little bit younger that's more relevant to um <laughs> this generation. Like I understand he's in like the Marvel movies and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. I just feel like young kids, 
you would want somebody that at least teenagers would be like, oh, yeah. and it's like, oh, yeah, this person was in this movie, and then they'll remember, oh, yeah, because this person was in that movie. Like, that's how they it, it just kind of stays with them. So that was the only thing I really had a problem with. And, I mean, this is not really like a spoiler or anything. They, this, this is out on YouTube. They have a fucking rap battle just, like, in right. the middle of the fucking basketball game. I hated that. Yeah, it's so that was much. cringe. It was, that was, um... Thank you. <laughs> that's is that, that's the best way to explain it, man. And it's like you could tell somebody like white wrote it because I don't understand what it is about white people that still feel like people rap that way. Like nobody <laughs> raps like that anymore. And whenever a, a like a cartoon character or something in the movie starts rapping like that in the fucking seventies or eighties, right. you know it's somebody white. Right. For that's sure, your bro. instant tag right there. Instant, yeah, yeah, that was cringe. Very cringe. Um, but other other than that, it was a lot of stuff to enjoy. Uh, it was a, a bunch yeah, of just Easter eggs take and their stuff kids like to that. See it. Like if y'all like you know watch the first one with them and then you know the second one. The, the thing, thing that one of the things that was the most iconic about the first Space Jam though was the music. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't think they went as hard on the no, music. No, because like, we ain't got, like, no space. There was a space. Like, that song was like, on the radio. Like Yeah, song like, those songs, like, like, it had Seal. Mm-hmm. Like, that that song, so I didn't even know it was Seal. Mm-hmm. And, but that's, I love that song. You could just, we were singing it at school. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how hard that song was. Uh, but I don't think that they did it with this one. Um, they also had the LeBron James Space Jam shoes. They're nice to me. I haven't uh, seen them. I need um, to see them. You had the, uh, somebody said that they look like the Flintstone push pops. <laughs> um, Matter of fact, hold on. Let me pull this up real quick. Real quick. LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Pull it up on the TV. Y'all know I love to cast some shit. Oh, man. Love to cast some shit. Hold on. No, no, it's, it's not it. Oh, here we go. Them? Yeah. I like them. They're nice. They're nice to me. I like colorful shoes, though. I'm on the fence. Like I like some colorful shoes, but I like these. Um, I feel like people, the like I said, the adults are trying to be like, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying, trying to talk down on it. But it's like these are going to be iconic to these kids. These are the space jams of this generation. Like right. these kids like LeBrons and Kyries. Like my little sister didn't want Jays. Mm-hmm. Like when she was like when she was a teenager, she did not want Jays. She I don't even think she, I still don't think she really wore them. She did like, but she like Kyrie's and she wanted KD's when she was coming up. Like, so they gonna look at this a lot different yeah. than we are. So I like them. I I think that it's gonna it, it's cool for this generation. Uh, I don't want to take this away from them. Uh, it had a lot of shit that, like I said, it had a lot of shit and jokes that I enjoyed. There was a lot of moments that I didn't think that I would be laughing at, but right. I was I was laughing at them. So I I do think you should check it out. Take your kids to see it. Um, it's 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 worth a matinee. That's my that's my rating on it because yeah. I like the matinee, uh, rent it, or a uh, full price ticket. You know what I'm saying? If it's a full price ticket, you need to go see that motherfucker IMAX, Dolby, all that. But it's it's a solid matinee. I I go catch that. Okay. Uh, MTV Cribs is uh announced its return. Um, <laughs> what do you think about that? I mean, I could do without it. I feel like, you know, we know what celebrity houses look like because of social media and stuff like that. Like, bring back room raiders. I could do without for real. That is true. We do know more what they look like now. But I feel like when they had the thing where people were, like, exposing, like, oh, yeah, they be renting places and stuff like that. Uh, you know, renting places for cribs. Mm-hmm. I felt like that took away a little bit of the... Why they used to be renting places for yeah, cribs? Yeah, some people used to just rent places out for cribs. You know what I always wonder? Is that was that really Red Man House or he was joking? I I think they said that was for real. 
why was he? Why is he living like that? I mean, that's how some some people really be in the music business for real. What the fuck? Yeah, some people really be down bad like that. That was uh, damn. Like yeah, some people really be. Look at Jaquan. Jaquan was down bad for a little minute too. I haven't heard him since we uh, was in the club getting tipsy. Who else? Who else? Like it'd it be a lot of a lot of niggas be down bad like that. D niggas from D four L. Oh yeah. Them franchise bo- oh, them franchise boys was down bad looking for a while. Huh? He still say that. I think cool. I feel like Redman is doing better now. I hope. But. <laughs> but they need to bring back Celebrity Deathmatch, if anything. Celebrity Deathmatch would be a fucking hit right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what the people you want. Know, you know how many fucking random beefs they have? Like, s- social media has created so many. Like, they would do Tristan Thomas versus Lamar Odom, even if they don't fight in real life. They would just make a Celebrity Deathmatch for that shit. Yeah, like because of some shit that's going on in the blog. Hell yeah. Like, they would have been did Vin Diesel versus The Rock. Yeah. Like, it's so, it's so many, so many that they would have done by now. That would have been a classic. That's what they need to bring back, if anything, so they can stop playing so much ridiculousness. Yeah, like, I love Rob. Dear He's dick. great. But we Dear need more. Dick. Dear so, dick. So, what about music? What you been listening to? So, um, I actually, well, I take that back. I've been listening to uh, AB. Okay. Uh, he was on the podcast with you and Perp. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've been Shout listening. out to AB. Hey, friend. I've been listening to his tape that he dropped. It's very Baton Rouge. Very Baton <laughs> it's very Rouge. Baton Rouge, but I really fuck with it because it's like not very. Average Baton Rouge, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. That's all the real way I could describe it. But definitely go check that out. Um, he he got it on Apple Music and it's on Spotify mm-hmm. actually because he sent me the Spotify link. So yeah, go click the link in his bio. Go check that shit. Check that out for mm-hmm. real. That's what that's what I, that's what I've been listening to a lot lately. Um, Cause I haven't, I you know you know how I, I really listen to a lot of the same stuff and then dabble some new things and that's what I'm feeling so yeah once, once I because I listened to it for the first time like last week and I really just listened to the whole thing actually so that's what that's why I don't really have like a favorite song because mm-hmm. I just play the whole thing every time I listen to it and just uh let it roll all the way from front to back so I feel like people will enjoy it that's that's been yeah. my, that's, that's okay my I'm gonna have to check it out for sure um the two songs that I've really been liking lately is Girls Outside by Mona Leo. Yeah, you haven't really fucked um, with that. And uh, this new song that just came out with Normani and Cardi, uh, Wild Side. I'm kind of like over the 90s nostalgia because it, it sampled Aaliyah One in a Million. Yeah. But I, I like it. I like yeah, the song. Yeah, I do it's like real, it as well. Yeah, it got... It, it, it's slappable. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, um, I fuck with it. I, I like the video. Um... It, so, I liked the video because it was just like a magazine. Yeah. It was like looking through a magazine, basically. Yeah. Um, it was very aesthetically pleasing. Um, yeah, they looked great. The dancers, everybody, Cardi, Normani looked absolutely beautiful. So, I do feel like um, hopefully it inspires some more people to do, put more effort like that into some videos. Like, I do, that's why I do like uh, Amine, his mm-hmm. videos, because they're, they are, they're very much like that as well. So, um, was yeah, his yeah definitely his videos are definitely he has really raw videos. He's very slept on for his videos, mm-hmm. um. But I just hope people put effort like that into videos again. Um, you know, story all storyline is like it, it, there's two two videos I like. It's ones with stories, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? They have concepts like the storyboard, and then they have uh, the other ones that are about aesthetics. So I feel like we need that balance. So I hope yeah. you know what I'm saying we get more of those. In yeah, it was it was dope. I fuck with it, but that's all I got. Yeah, that's that's all we got this week, you guys. Uh, that's a bit of, that's no definitely more. a longer episode for sure. It wasn't. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a longer episode. But now you know that one was kind of just yeah, rolling. That one was just out but uh, yeah, man, we'll, we'll be dropping this again. Uh, we'll we'll be finding a good day during the week 
to release these episodes. I'm, we're getting, <laughs> Figuring we're out what's at, the best we, day. Yeah, we get so that. that we can do a consistent day. Definitely, definitely. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.